understand actors and producers being upset about those one, two, three, four, five things because it doesn't. It, it, you can get the whole story if you want it, mm -hmm. but uh, people don't no, get the whole just, story. Uh, they just, uh, you know, they don't realize uh, what it's like to be in, you know, 200 theaters as opposed to 1,200. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Naturally, yeah. it makes Naturally, a difference in the standing. <laughs> okay, you ready? Okay. Well, Chuck, welcome to our city. Thank you, Bobby. Lovely to be back. It's great. We've got to stop meeting like this. <laughs> yes. For how many years? You know, we're, longer we're not than I just want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember them. Uh, you are here, of course, for a fundraising event. For the Weekend to Wipe Out Cancer, which I know is one of Dallas's most uh, meaningful charitable events. And I'm glad to be part of it. What will be the essence of your message today? I'm going to talk about uh, famous men. No, not famous men, great men. There's a difference. <laughs> uh, anyone can be famous, not anyone can be great. And uh, I've probably played more genuinely, undeniably great men than uh, most actors, certainly than any American actor. And it's an instructive experience, and uh, that's what I'm talking about. And do you try to analyze what made them great? Is that it? Uh, to the extent that that's possible. It's very difficult to determine what makes men as disparate, each from the other, as, say, uh, Cardinal Richelieu and Andrew Jackson, uh, or uh, Michelangelo and Sir Thomas More. Uh, both. Well, all four great figures, each very different from the other. Uh, the only qualities I've found in common among great men, I know they're great women, I don't get to play those, uh, is one extraordinary, almost inexhaustible energy. And two, even uh, in that first case of, of uh, the question of energy, even with men who were not uh, completely healthy throughout their lives, like Richelieu uh, and uh, Jackson, who is during his period of greatest achievement from the Battle of New Orleans on through his presidency, uh, was afflicted with many physical difficulties, as was Richelieu. But that doesn't matter. They still have more energy than anybody else. And the second thing is they're able to focus it uh, on a given goal. Uh, most of them make those goals uh, something other than personal goals. They're valuable goals to the rest of the population. And uh, they're, it's very instructive to scratch around inside the head bones of people like that. What part does, <coughs> excuse me, what part does intelligence play? Oh, intelligence uh, for a great man, I think, is almost a constant, a, a given. I didn't say that those were the only qualities. I said those were the only qualities they all shared in, in common. Uh, certainly intelligence, uh, talent of whatever sort is needed for the kind of role the man plays, whether he's a political leader, a military leader, uh, an artist, a uh, philosopher. Uh, they're all different uh, characteristics, of course. When I was setting up this interview, our assignments uh, man, our assignments editor, said, uh, well, it's nice to know where Moses stays when he comes to <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> now, you must get this every day of your life, Chuck. What, a reference to Moses? Uh, I, or, 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 or to Hunt. these, to or these the people. <clears throat> well, I, it's certainly true that uh, uh, if not the reality of the men themselves, uh, something of, of their shadow seems to trail on behind me. And uh, I understand that. I was, uh, in, indeed, it on the one hand limits my casting. On the other hand, it, uh, it sometimes is an asset. I just finished doing sort of a guest cameo in Arnold Schwarzenegger's current film. And the director, Jim Cameron, said that when they were uh, I play the head of the CIA, and uh, Arnold is uh, one of the agents. And uh, Jim Cameron, the director, said uh, when they were considering the casting, somebody said, you know, we've got to have somebody that can plausibly intimidate Arnold Schwarzenegger. And somebody else said, Chuck Heston. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> see, that isn't really Chuck Heston intimidating him. It's Moses and Andrew Jackson and Cardinal Richelieu and Mark Antony and all those fellows. And you've heard all the jokes a thousand all times. All the jokes. Yeah. What are a couple of them that come up all the time? Well, the most often is an invarying request to part the Red Sea. And if I show up at a picnic and it's raining, people genuinely look at me with reproach, you know. They, they really do. It's amazing. <laughs> this has to have some impact on your personal life, Chuck, because uh, if you go out and get in some sort of a little fracas, uh, I mean, it, it would be just a bigger headline than some actor who uh, is kind of expected to be in a fracas now. Uh, and but again. I can quell the rough waters with a look. <laughs> 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 no, a celebrity, uh, by definition, is a corrosive environment. Uh, it is literally, literally destroyed many people. It is seriously damaged uh, many more, and it leaves none of us unmarked. Uh, look at Roseanne Arnold. But you seem to have always uh, kept it in perspective and under control. Well, I hope so. Uh, I would uh, rather, for example, be Nolan Ryan than some other pictures I could name. <laughs> It's, it's a question of keeping your life and your place in perspective and to realize that the enormous uh, privilege that comes with being a public person, but also responsibility. You uh, are constantly uh, in the public eye. That's, uh, that's why I like to spend so much, as much private time as I can because 80% of my life is in public, and you've got to understand that, and you have to accept the boundaries of that. You don't throw uh, uh, firecrackers into crowds of school children. Uh, you don't uh, physically attack someone else, either physically or verbally. But would you agree that people expect more from you? Oh. You mean because I've, of all these great men I've played? I, I, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, it's a nice standard to try and live up to. Nobody can, uh, uh, can equate Sir Thomas More <laughs> or Richelieu or those fellows, or Andrew Jackson or Tom Jefferson. Chuck, I promised that I wouldn't keep you long, so well, because Bobby, you're it's here. Well, Bobby, it's always wonderful to talk to you. I always, uh, that's one of the reasons I like to come back to Dallas. You're very kind, thank you. And okay. do come back often. I surely will. Thank you, Jeff. Bye-bye. Again, had one of the great thrills of my life, Chuck, and I've met in 40 years yes. a lot of wonderful yes. people, um, was being his seatmate on an airplane oh, between yeah. Dallas and yeah. Missouri and uh, New York. Well, he's, if there ever was an example of someone who was impervious to celebrity, it was him. Have, do you know him? Have you no, met no, him? No, You've no. You've never met him? Oh, I no. would hope for you that you meet no. him sometime. Because he is... Well, he's the epitome of what a, an athlete should be. Exactly. Both in achievement and in person. And that airplane, it was just everybody, you know, a steady stream up to the... Yeah, uh, we of course. We had the bulkhead seats. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, people... So, um, you don't want to be talking now, do you? you uh, well, I'll be listening. Uh -huh, so you talk. Okay, yeah, well, and we're not recording your sound, so you can say whatever you like. Therefore, uh, I'm saying something that uh, interests you, and then I say something that amuses you, <laughs> and then I say something <laughs> perhaps that you find a little puzzling, awful looks, and that about covers the spectrum, doesn't it? <laughs> we'll wave you off. Okay. Do you think people expect more of you because of the people you've played? I suppose they, uh, to a certain extent, I so on and so on. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. What are some of the things people say to you most frequently, making jokes? About that they expect me to part the waters when I come <laughs> at a party with a swimming pool. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, I think that'll get it. We don't need any single shot.
Well, you know, they're claiming that she misused her office with... Uh, you mean when she, what was she... When she yes, yes. And it's all a big political oh, thing.